All right, welcome back everybody for another episode of Dollar Bin Digging. This is the video and article that I do for comicbookinvest.com where I talk about those books that are still probably tucked away, buried in those dollar boxes, those cheap bins, wherever you find your discount comics, whether it be at your LCS, flea markets, yard sales, half price books, etc. This is the stuff I think you can still go and find, kind of like a little scavenger hunt kind of list based off of some of the recent news, the rumors, announcements, things going on in the comics, TV shows, movies, etc. Just stories that kind of pique my interest and get me thinking about books that we should be going and digging out of those boxes for cheap still. Hopefully you're enjoying this series as well as everything else here on the channel. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Please like, subscribe, hit the alert button so you don't miss anything. Keep telling your friends we can keep growing the channel. And if you want to see what books I got for you this week, just hang on for a few seconds after the intro and I will be right back. Right, so kicking us off this week, we are going to start off with some Doctor Strange news. So apparently Doctor Strange 3 might adapt the Time Runs Out storyline. If you guys aren't aware, this was the storyline that kind of set up Secret Wars, the second version. Not the original version, this is the Hickman run, and Molecule Man, you had Emperor God Doom, etc. Great read, very large buildup. I mean, we're talking, this is a long buildup. This is, this is a... This is months, months of buildup, a lot of issues in this story. How will they adapt all of this? I don't know, but we'll see. We'll see if this all comes to pass. It makes a lot of sense, but who knows? Right now, it is just rumor, but that doesn't mean we can't go and look for these books for cheap. And what I'm going to tell you to do is look for the entire run. That's right. Sure, particular issues will get you a bit of a bonus, you know, a little bit of a you know bump if you're trying to flip it. But for the read alone, go and grab any of these issues. Avengers and New Avengers as they wrapped up the Time Runs Out storyline, starting with this one. Everybody's been looking at this book lately. It's been selling pretty well. It's even going to make the top 10 in 10 for this week. This is issue 35 of the Avengers where we're starting. Time runs out. Eight months. Eight months out. Eight months they ran this story down. So as you can tell, this is going to be a very long story. And it didn't just run in Avengers. As I mentioned, it was also taking place in uh, New Avengers as well. So concurrently, month after month, you see also eight months out, new Avengers, but starting with issue 24, both of these series started telling their stories. We're getting Thanos, you got you know, the Avengers, like I said, we got Emperor God Doom and Molecule, Molecule Man coming up a bit later. Fun read, great read, great build up. And it was actually a very satisfying event. I know a lot of events are kind of crappy, but the Secret Wars event actually was very interesting and it was a lot of fun to read especially with those battle world stuff. It, it was a lot of fun. I, I will give Marvel credit for that. We need more of that now. Let's just say that we need more of that now. But like I said, grab this, any of this run. You're going to have some trouble finding some of these issues. Like I said, this issue 35 is starting to sell for a little bit of a premium now, like you'll see in a bit, but you can find these. These are still out there. I've passed over these many, many times. Just grab them seven months out. You got issues 36 and 25 respectively for Avengers and new Avengers. We'll run it through, you know, the next pair of issues were still seven months out. They were like bi monthly shipping here in some cases. So 37 and 26, we're hitting now six months out. Story is continuing here throughout these issues with 38 and 27. Also, cool covers here. These two, as we hit with uh, Avengers 39 and New Avengers 28, as you might guess, as we look at this, yep, these two go together. So get yourself a nice little connecting cover in the midst of this as well. I think there's also a, another, uh, like a variant uh, connecting set mixed in here down the line uh, later. I didn't set it up and put it in the deck, but keep an eye out for it too, because uh, there are some regular, you know, regular variants as well. There are some second prints mixed in here too, like I think issue 35 that started this off had a second print, and uh, there are even some incentives. But we're not getting into all that. We're just talking about the regular issues. Hopefully, you can dig them out of those cheap boxes. As we roll on with issue 40, pretty cool Thanos cover, Molecule Man there on 29 for New Avengers. Uh, we get a nice little callback to the Ultimates, number one here uh, on issue 41 of Avengers. The New Avengers, we got Captain Britain showing up at this point with issue 31. And then as this starts wrapping up and we're getting into the Doom stuff and we're really getting close to um, Secret Wars, 
and the battle world stuff. You got Gladiator and like the Annihilus, all that stuff here. Uh, we also got uh, a bunch of stuff going on here. I'm sorry, we're setting up uh, our boy Emperor God Doom because that is one of these ones that's going to wrap us up here at the end that is doing pretty well. I mean, Mr. Fantastic, Black Panther, obviously. Uh, Universe is colliding, falling apart, being saved by the Emperor God Doom. Just fun, fun stuff. You got Cap and Iron Man fighting, and there's that cover. I love that cover with uh, Doom on uh, issue 33 of New Avengers. I've talked about that one before. That one has gotten pricey uh, as of late, so uh, that might be the tough one for, go for you to go and dig out. But like I said, there's a lot of issues here to go and read as a build-up to Secret Wars, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. So keep an eye out for them. And you can see here, you can, some of them are selling at a premium. Look, that New Avengers, that 35. Yeah, there's copies selling for as low as four bucks, and there's copies starting to move close to 20 bucks. So be aware, there's still probably ones buried out there in those cheap boxes still. Uh, and then you can see runs of the look, that's near whole set there for like 70, 80 bucks. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot to unpack, a lot of books to go through. Just keep an eye on, go grab them, piece it together here and there. Whichever ones you can get for cheap, save you money down the line and get you a good read. Because uh, you can even see now, Avengers 35. Uh, it's in a lot with uh, the variant cover. That's also, I think, a part of a connecting cover that I was mentioning. Eight bucks for the two of them. So it's basically cover price. But meanwhile, that that Doom cover, $40. And then, another again, another run uh, of the Avengers part of the title, $99. Remember, it's Avengers has a run. New Avengers has a run. They all go together. They're kind of telling the same kind of story, building up to that huge event. But I just say, keep an eye out for them. You saw the top of the border. Uh, the Secret Wars was coming as time was running out. That's what you're looking for. I'd say grab any of them if they're cheap enough. That's all. Worth the read. That said, our next story we have here is a character that's going to be showing up in uh, Agatha, the Coven show, whatever the Coven of Darkness. I can't remember what they're calling it. The Agatha Harkness show. Coven of Chaos. There it is. I should just look at my own headline. So, Coven of Chaos. Uh, Shashir Zamata will play Jennifer Kale. And then this other guy, Miles, is going to be Hulkling, apparently. I, we're not going to be talking about Hulkling. I'm going to focus in instead right here today on this character of Jennifer Kale. So, yeah, they're changing around a little bit. I don't think it matters. But if you do want her first, it's going to be a tough one. You're, it's, it's, it's a tall order ask that you're going to find this in the cheap boxes. You never know, but I still want to tell you so you're aware of it. Her first appearance was in Fear, number 11. That's the actual title. The actual title is just Fear. But you got to search for it a lot of different ways because a lot of people think it's called Man-Thing, number 11. But it isn't. A lot of people think it's Inventure into Fear, number 11. But the actual title, I think, is just Fear at this point, at this stage. So just keep that in mind when you're searching. So there is a chance some of these can get mislabeled, hard to find, missed in some searches. But that all said, this is the issue where we do get introduced to Jennifer Kale here. Like, right off the bat, she's in this story. And then it gets into the whole witch and the history of her family, etc. Uh, I'm not going to get into all that right now. But it's a book that, yes, if you did manage to find one, it already sells pretty well. Yes, there are cheap copies that will sell if they're not in great great shape, great condition. But by and large, yes, the $13, $14 sales do happen. But a lot of them more in that $50, $40 kind of range if they're in a better grade. Same thing with the asking prices. 30 to 44 dollars and even those are for uh not great copies i mean that 30 dollar copy is listed as fair to good so that's the listing prices you, i'm just saying you never know when you're digging in those boxes just keep an eye out for uh this classic 70s uh marvel stuff so if you can't find that which like i said it's a, it's a good chance you're not going to find that in a dollar bin what you will find in a dollar bin still is this uh, prestige format series. Cause I always pass by these and I'm like, I always think, do I have these already? Cause I do like the artist, uh, Weiss Pertatio. I can't say his name. Right. But uh, Legion of night. This is also a story that focuses in around Jennifer Kale. And uh, you got a lot of the horror aspects of the Marvel universe here too. Uh, you got the werewolves, etc. But this prestige format, uh, two part, two parter. So there's two issues. This is issue one. Then there's also an issue two uh steve gerber writing it like i said it's a fun little book you can go and find these these are out there even though they're that nice prestige format cardstock kind of cover uh they're still in those cheap boxes for whatever reason it just didn't take off it wasn't like a huge hit for uh, uh for the aftermarket at least but copies even selling online for as cheap as two bucks dollar sixty six three dollars 
you're not going to get rich if you find it. It's just kind of a fun little read and a fun little book you can go and scoop up out of those, you know, dollar bins. Uh, asking prices five to ten dollars for the set. Like I said, very very cheap. Another series that uh, focuses in on this character of Jennifer Kale, where she has more ties and is actually a part of the Midnight Suns, which is a team that a lot of people are hoping and speculating will show up in the MCU in some form. Does that mean this character and this actress are going to be part of Midnight Suns? Not necessarily, but there's precedence that it could happen. So keep the options open. I mean, when Marvel has uh, built these things out, they've generally worked with the characters they already have on screen. And with this character already being on screen, if she makes it out of this Agatha show, there's a chance we probably see her again. There are not a lot of one-offs uh, in the MCU when you think about it, right? They, they don't like to introduce a ton of new characters. They kind of work with what they got. So with that in mind, keep an eye out for Marvel Zombies 4. Yes, Marvel Zombies 4. A lot of volumes of Marvel Zombies. This I think they went at least five or six, but Marvel Zombies 4. Uh, this is a Greg Land cover here on uh, this four-issue series, the first one. This is the run where, uh, again, Jennifer Kale joins up with these uh, other horror characters in this iteration of the uh, Midnight Suns. But great covers here throughout. You got issue two, three, and four. Uh, I like them all, so if you can find them, just get them for the covers alone, and I think it's worth a buck if you can dig them out. But you can see here, they do okay. So with prices of the whole set just being like $20, $25. So it's four issues for $20, $25. And it's four, four or five bucks, you know, bucks a book, really. I mean, it's not really that super duper expensive. So they're still pretty cheap. You're not going to get rich if you find these, but you get some cool covers and a decent read at the same time. Asking prices, uh, individual copies, four to six bucks each, like I was saying. And you look, you can even sometimes sneak a whole set for as cheap as $16. But granted, you got to pay shipping, but it's only five bucks shipping, so that's not that bad when you think about it. So just something else you can keep in mind if you're interested in this character and want to just have something in your back pocket in case this character hits or you just want to have something fun to read and, and you're just looking for something to kind of tie in and get you excited for this next uh, Disney Plus show. That said, another character. I've talked about this character before. I think it was on a Forgotten First episode. I was looking to see if I did this in Dollar Bin Digging before, but I think it was on my Forgotten First series. And that is um, Amelia Harcourt. So apparently... There's just some, you know, questions because James Gunn is, uh, you know, now in charge of the DCU movie universe. And he has, uh, you know, got I think they got engaged. I don't know if they got married yet, but he has ties with the actress playing this character of Amelia Harcourt, who is no longer in the comics. So they did kind of recently bring her back uh, in the comics. And so now there's questions like, oh, did, did James Gunn have that happen because, you know, of his girl? Hey, who knows? Does it matter? I don't think it matters. We characters come back all the time. In comics, they're comics after all. That said, we know we're still going to see more of her in the uh, in the DC universe going forward. She has a, a pretty significant role there on Peacemaker, where we're going to get another season of that. More Suicide Squad stuff potential for her to see her there. But that said, if you're interested in the character of Amelia Harcourt, you can still go and find her first appearance because it is a heavily printed book that is littering a lot of those dollar bins and uh, cheap boxes out there. And that book is not Suicide Squad number one, as some online places will direct you towards. I scoured that first issue, did not see hiding or hair of her. It's not until issue two did I see Amelia Harcourt show up. So I don't know why uh, some places online are pointing to her the first issue, because I didn't see her in there. Unless there's some weird background silhouette that I'm missing, uh, then whatever. But Suicide Squad number two, uh, this is the Jim Lee cover. Pretty awesome. There's a Lee Bermejo cover as well. Pretty sweet. But inside, very clearly, you know, you can call me hardcore. There she's there. She's in the story. Uh, not a ton, but it's not just like this one panel. She's, she's in the story a tiny bit. So uh, this would be his first appearance, I would say. Unless you guys want to start debating and all that stuff, you go ahead. I don't really care. I'm just showing you what's in there and telling you what's in there. And for a dollar, I'd say go grab it. That's all. Uh, and copies even sell for as low as 99 cents online or five bucks. Yeah, not going to make you rich, but hey, who knows down the line? A copy's asking uh, three to four dollars, too. So basically cover price or less. Like I said, this is the start of Rebirth. Very popular at the time with Suicide Squad. Jim Lee was doing the art. This was printed pretty well. So there's plenty out there. All right. Uh, another story they're going to go shift on over to. I think I got two more for you. So not a lot left. Probably be about 20 minutes here. Uh, that's kind of what I shoot for with these shows anyway. But 
Archie. So Archie's first trans character is getting her own comic. Yeah. So they're kind of retconning, I think, a little bit of uh, this character from the past. But here we go. In this upcoming Strange Science book, Chilling Avengers presents Strange Science. So it's like a subset, one-shot, offshoot of Chilling Avengers, I guess. Uh, we're getting Strange Science. And this is going to feature this character who first appeared, if you want to go and dig back there, Dilton's Strange Science. So you got shrink rays, all this weird, fun stuff. Uh, so there you go. If you're interested... This oddball Archie book from back in the day is the first appearance of a character that's getting a little spinoff. So if you're interested, go and find it. If not, then you can just pass it up. You know, I'm not saying you have to buy any of this stuff. It's up to you. It's just fun stuff that I think you can go and dig out of those cheap boxes because, look, even this thing doesn't sell for all that much. Recent sales, cheap as three bucks, and that's with other issues included. Uh, it's seven dollars. Asking prices, three bucks, five bucks, up to 15 at the most. So it's not really going to make you rich if you go and find this. But, you know, it's out there. It's out there if you want to go and dig it up there. So just keep it in mind. And with that said, our final story is going to go in with our thumbnail, probably what you've been waiting for and looking for, because I know a lot of people are excited for Taylor Swift. I mean, she's been dominating on tour, making tons and tons of money. And a uh, rumor that she's going to be Dazzler in this uh, Deadpool movie. Even it's just a cameo. So rumor to appear. It's possible. Who knows? Who knows? This is the kind of silly, fun thing that they could do. How big would the role be? Who knows? It was here going forward? Probably not. But you never know. You never know. If she likes it, maybe they build a little bit more out of the character. It's all speculation at this point. But that said, there's even some fan art out there imagining what she would look like as Dazzler. And it would work. I think it would work. I'd be into it. Now, you're not going to find her first appearance in the dollar bins. Those days are long, 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 long gone. But if you wanted to know what it was, it's Uncanny 130. You used to be able to find her first solo series in the dollar bins. It's gotten a little tougher lately, and it's gotten pretty popular with these rumors. So chances of finding it are going to be a little tougher, but her solo series has been a popular grab as well. This, if you do manage to find any of these, Number one, again, this was decently printed uh, as they were trying to push this new character and trying to go for something different, capitalize on that disco era, I guess. Uh, but you can see copies recently selling for seven, eight, ten bucks. Not a ton, but they're moving. And volume wise, there's a lot of copies selling. But still, those asking prices are like six bucks, but as high as twenty five dollars if you find a nice, clean copy. So go ahead, dig. Sure, maybe you find Dazzler number one. But. While you're looking for that Dazzler number one, there's a couple of other fun little things I think you can go and grab if you really are that excited to see Dazzler show up with Deadpool and Wolverine. And that first thing being, hey, how about we look for covers where they jump, they share, they know they share the cover together. So Deadpool and Dazzler, have they been on a cover together? Yeah, they have. Deadpool 67, disco roller skating here, kind of fun going to be tough. I mean, these Deadpool books have been kind of tough to find uh, as time has gone on, like the earlier runs. Those earlier runs have been a little tough uh, because Deadpool's become a very popular character. So these things have sold for more than a dollar. So it's gotten tough to find these things, but that doesn't mean you can't go and look and it doesn't mean you can't find them. So Deadpool 67, just for the cover alone, for these two together on the cover, you can see uh, copy selling for 15 to 20 bucks, asking prices 20 to 25. Just cover i mean that's really i think what we're talking about here it's just the cover alone i think there might take part in the storyline inside but i have no idea what happened in the story here i i wasn't reading deadpool at the time and i haven't taken the time to go in i was literally just looking for covers so uh that's where i came up with this one as well as this next one which is a little more uh possible i think because it's a little bit of a later run deadpool book more of these being printed again popularity of the character more of them out there uh pretty cool brooks cover here deadpool number 30 Part of the original Sin crossover, Deadpool, Dazzler, once again, on the cover together. This is another one I think you can go and grab those cheap boxes. So this is the kind of stuff I think people like to look for. I mean, there's no real long-term investment potential here. It's just kind of a fun little nugget, something you can go and grab now. And if you want to try to flip it, you might have an opportunity if this story does come to fruition. There might be a window there where these books just start selling for, like the other book, $20, $25. Because right now, this one, is only selling for what is it at? Uh, best offer on seven bucks was a recent sale. Asking prices three dollars, dollar seventy five. 
six bucks. So this is a very, very cheap book. But like I said, you never know. There's potential if you want to try to flip it down the line. If not, and it never comes to pass, well, you wasted a dollar. It's a very cheap gamble, very cheap investment. I don't know. Take a shot. Following up with this, though, uh, as she was also in the storyline here again with uh, Deadpool, uh, I think it's a couple of issues later. This one is sort of a weird they share the cover because she's on the cover of a book he's reading. So it's got that kind of fourth wall kind of break thing going here. But Deadpool 32 does feature Dazzler on the cover of a comic that Deadpool is reading on the cover of this comic of his own comic. Whatever. It's Deadpool. You get it, right? But this is another one if you want to look for it. I don't think this one would have as much upside as the other issue 30. But just for purposes here, three bucks a copy sold for recently and asking prices two dollars to five dollars. So once again, very, very cheap book. And uh, yeah, so let's not forget that he, she is also going to share the screen with Wolverine potentially because Wolverine's going to be in this Deadpool movie as well. Uh, and while those two have been X-Men together for a very long time, Finding just covers with those two together are is not hard, uh, or I think there's gonna be a lot of interest in that. But what might be an, an interesting thing to go and look for, just again for fun, maybe just for the read alone, is going back to this Wolverine uh, first class story. So this is telling like an early, uh, you know, early story with these two crossing each other's path, and you got them two on the cover here, which is kind of fun. So you know, again, there's no long-term potential here, I don't think, for something like this, but it's just a fun little book that I'm pretty sure you can, if you're digging, there's a chance you can go and find something like this, because nobody's uh, asking a ton for this. I mean, look, this book sells for, and this is issue 16, by the way, uh, a best offer on two bucks. They accepted less than two dollars for this book. I mean, the cover price was three dollars, I think, at the time. But, uh, and asking price is dollar ninety-nine, three bucks, dollar eighty-nine. Yeah, this is a dollar book all day. So, just for fun, give it a read, give it a flip through. Plus, you got a good, pretty, pretty cool cover with the two of them on it. For a dollar, it doesn't hurt, right? That's all I'm saying. So let me know what you think in the comment section section down below. Uh, that's all I got for you this week. Uh, thanks for stopping by and checking this out. Uh, I do appreciate you and I appreciate all the support. Um, let me know uh, what else you want to hear about. If there's well, here, this is what I'm going to put out, put out there for you. Next week, I had to film Dollar Bending Ding earlier because I'm going to be away on vacation. So I have a special edition for you based off of one of your viewer suggestions. We're going to be looking at some uh, mini comics and promo comics. Uh, so let me know if you guys want to see more of that stuff, too, and not just news-based things. I can mix in occasionally, especially when the news weeks have been slow. Uh, I can do like a special edition, something about like, you know, maybe wizard one half issues or the wizard free issues or some of those uh, other ash cans is another idea. Uh, I've been kicking around of things we can do because those are the types of things you can sometimes find just in those cheap boxes, just stuck between books. You're like, what is this? And there's like a little ash can of like pit down there for some reason. I always grab them. That's the kind of fun stuff I love finding in the boxes. So we'll get to that. Come back next week for that one. Cause like I said, I already recorded it. It's already ready to go. It's going to be next Thursday, though. So with that all said, thank you again for all the support. And uh, I'll see you all soon with some more content. All right. Later.